Morning Joe continues to fawn over Vice President Kamala Harris and her, quote, great ground game. Let's watch. Something's happening now when lifelong Republicans uh, are telling me that they're, they and their daughters want to drive four hours to see a Kamala Harris Tim Waltz rally. But the key is, do those rallies, do those translate into votes? And um, I, there was a big question in 2016 whether those rallies translated into votes, because unlike Barack Obama in 2008, Donald Trump didn't really have a great ground game, right? I will say in 2024, Kamala Harris does have a great ground game because Jen O'Malley started building it for Joe Biden years ago. And that's what she's an expert at. And that's what they've been investing at. And you add that and then David Pluff and the other additions to the campaign. Chances are good they're going to translate this sort of pop cultural moment into votes uh, in November. Meanwhile, the Harris campaign released a new ad touting her immigration record. Here's a clip. Kamala Harris has spent decades fighting violent crime. As a border state prosecutor, she took on drug cartels and jailed gang members for smuggling weapons and drugs across the border. As vice president, she backed the toughest border control bill in decades. And as president, she will hire thousands more border agents and crack down on fentanyl and human trafficking. Now let's take a look at Scarborough's reaction to that. And that's exactly what you have to do. You, you, you go right in to the issue that your opponent thinks is your weakness and you make it your strength. It's something that she's effectively done, uh, Kamala Harris, on the campaign trail already. I suspect it's something that she'll effectively do also in the debate because it's very simple. First of all, uh, border crossings uh, this summer lower uh, than they were of course, when Donald Trump was leaving uh, the White House, and also the Langford bill, the most conservative border bill ever Kamala Harris supported. And all those things that she said in that ad she supported, um, Donald Trump actually stopped. So uh, the first thing that was said on Morning Joe by Scarborough that struck me is that Obama didn't have a ground game in 2008. I've worked in the field in presidential campaigns I promise you every single Democratic campaign's field office is modeling something they're doing after the organizing that Obama did in 2008. That what he said? I thought he said he did have a ground game. I, I think he's, I thought he said he didn't, and now we're seeing Kamala I thought he was does. saying Trump didn't have a ground. I, yeah, I, regard, I mean, you're correct. Obama ground. had one of the most impressive ground games ever. I hope that's what he said, yeah. because if he didn't, that would be to misunderstand a huge chunk of Democratic politics. Right. But also rallies and, and ground game are very different things. Having organizers and field offices knocking doors and getting groups together to talk about how they're making a plan to vote, which increases turnout, That that's a real ground game. Right. Right, He's right. right to say these rallies might not translate. Right. Ground game is, you know, having enough activists in every state to go knock doors, distribute literature, register your people to vote. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a little bit different than holding rallies, which are to gin up enthusiasm, are more for optics mm -hmm. and appearances. You know, if you're visiting the swing states and getting huge crowds of people uh, when to speak when you speak there, that is some evidence that you're doing something right. But uh, the ground game in terms of the nuts and bolts of campaigning is what's really important. Yeah, Barack Obama had the most successful <laughs> operation in that regard um, ever. Uh, so I, I don't know that, you know, I, I, I simply don't know if Kamala Harris is doing that well. I'm sure she's doing quite well. Um, Republicans are, I think, doing better at this than they were in maybe the last two cycles. But, you know, whether it's enough remains to be seen. Right. I think the rallies are people showing up who are already so intensely engaged with yeah. politics, people who are definitely going to show up to vote. It does energize them, maybe get them to donate, talk about it with their friends more who might not be engaged. But I don't think it really changes that much. Yeah, it, it earns media attention and media attention is worth right. something. People you know, listening it's not to everything. the speeches on yeah. new shows like Well, ours. right. Trump, for instance, has always benefited from um, 
he gets so much free media that, that he doesn't have to pay for because he's just talked about in the media incessantly. Talked about in a negative way in most of the mainstream media, but talked about nonetheless, which contributed to him having like the highest name identification of anyone ever running for president who wasn't right. already the president. People had seen him on their televisions for years. They knew who he was. They felt, they felt close to him, and that bought him a lot of, that helped him earn a lot of votes without him having to introduce himself to, uh, to the American people. Kamala Harris, and, and, and you know, Joe Biden was, when he ran for president in 2020, he was not beloved by the media at all, but he was better known than the rest of the field because he was the sitting vice president. He was a little bit underrated, actually, because the media was like, well, he's not exciting, he's not progressive, he's an old white man, what do we have to even write about? But the American people already knew who he was. Um, you know, Kamala Harris is, I think, being is somewhat known to the American people and is being reintroduced to them. And uh, the media is doing everything they can to introduce her to the American people in a positive way. Um, you know, manifesting all of these positive pop culture vibes on her behalf that, like Obama, are worth something, but are not worth as much as having a competent ground game and having excited young people knocking doors and doing work on your behalf. Maybe she has that too, maybe it's sincere, I don't know, I've been a little bit skeptical, but uh, you know, things are going pretty well for her campaign so far. It's very close right now, it could absolutely go either way. Um, I, I have, she very well could win on the strength of the campaign she's, she's running right now. Uh, it will be extremely close. Yeah, it's easy for young people to get excited about a candidate like Kamala coming after Joe Biden, someone who is more progressive than Joe Biden, more alive than Joe Biden. Uh, that support with the pop culture stuff, with Brat and all of the posting online, is organic. The media's response to that, where they're like holding up a printout of the Kamala HQ Twitter page, and they're like, look, the background's green, that means Brat, what is Brat? And instead of just getting someone who's Gen Z on to discuss this, mm -hmm. a bunch of old dudes just talk about it and try and make sense of it. I don't think the media is helping her support among youth voters and her popularity on the internet, I would say is organic. Mainstream media is so, not huh? helping that. Uh, mainstream media- I'm not all convinced that it's organic. People like Scarborough saying, oh, this ad is so great of her on immigration. I promise you 90% of the young people that are posting Brat Summer Kamala stuff are not happy that she's running to the right of Trump on immigration, which that ad was pretty much her saying, yes, I am. I was tougher on the border than Trump was. That is not gonna be popular among progressives and this idea that Trump is so far to the right that we're creating a big tent and capturing those votes, that's not necessary. You don't well, need to cater to Republicans. I, I mean, you can say that. I, I, I don't know, I would argue, I mean, I don't want her to because I don't really want her to win, but <laughs> you could argue that she should. You think it's a winning fact, strategy? Kate, I, I, I think, Kate, I think trying to win over, I mean, people, According to polls, immigration is the most important issue right now, and the public is well to, they're to my right on immigration. Mm -hmm. The public is very much to the right on immigration. They are fed up with, uh, with what's happening on the border. They want less immigration. They particularly want less illegal immigration. They want something done about it. So she needs to signal, I, 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 don't, I don't think she could win by running a very progressive we need to open the border and it's all fine and we need to bring more people in because that's not, po yes, I understand that's popular with young people, but if it's between, I don't know, if it's between playing to a very progressive young people voter demographic or reassuring, right-leaning, Trump skeptical, centristy type people in the swing states that she will be at least somewhat moderate or conservative on immigration, I would think that's the better strategy. But she doesn't have to take my advice. I'm not, yeah. I'm not rooting for her. <laughs> Polling shows that the most popular policy among progressive policies that were polled for, 61% of likely voters support expanding Medicare. Cutting the cost of prescription drugs also very high. 64% of likely voters, Republicans included, yeah. support making the wealthy pay their fair share in taxes. She could be running on left-wing policies. She said yesterday she's not running on Medicare for all. She hasn't made a big statement about wealth taxes, so she could run on progressive policies and still be a popular candidate. <laughs> and she's just choosing I, not I to. I hope she does that. I hope she promises. I hope she talks incessantly about raising taxes on people. That would be uh, just wonderful. Please do that, Kamala Harris. Yeah. Love to see that. More Rising right after this. <laughs>